Hey guys, this is Zion Seven Lego Maniac. Be sure to check out my other social media accounts and my Patreon. Links are down below. After only a month of work, I am proud to present my Guardians of the Galaxy minifigures. I pretty much started on these um, early March. Yeah, that's right. I said March, which means I started this way before MGF. Take notes. Originally, I wanted to include three more figures such as Yondu, Nebula, and Mantis, but that didn't work out the way I wanted to. These guys have been done near the end of March, and I am definitely proud of the results. Plus, this is a big step from my previous Guardians customs back in 2014. Moving on to the figures. Star Lord was the first figure I started on back in early March, and he is probably my favorite figure in this showcase. On Flickr, I said that if I don't like any of their outfits in the second movie, then I'll make their costumes from the original movie. Good thing that the majority of their outfits are pretty much exactly the same, and Star Lord is no exception. Starting off with the helmet, this is actually Lego Star Lord helmet from the original Gardens of the Galaxy sets, you know, the good ones. This was from my old custom Star Lord figure, and I completely repainted it and made it clean as possible. His head is obviously Lego's design, and I didn't do anything special to it. I do not like the look of Star Lord with the new Superman hairpiece, so I went with this, which is way better in my opinion. His shirt is missing the white letters, but I did that on purpose. I don't want to risk ruining the black outlines I painted, and white paint is actually very tough to work with. Besides, his shirt is mostly covered with his trench coat, scarf, and necklace, so it's kind of pointless to add white in the first place. His necklace and scarf are actually both fully removable. I actually sculpted the necklace for the thread and the top part of the Lego antenna piece just for the charm. And the scarf is actually made from a leftover Kate Manis fabric material. The trench coat was definitely the challenging part. I didn't want to just paint details on this coat because that would look rather boring. So for the paddings on the shoulders, I just cut up two pieces of E-tape and glued them on both front and the back areas of the trench coat. I then modified the trench coat a bit by cutting out more unwanted material and sculpted this tiny silver triangle on his left shoulder area. His arms has padding and sleeves made out of E-tape for a more 3D element. It wasn't easy gluing those pieces of E-tape around the wrist, but it was definitely worth it. Now, Lego Assembly has an E-tape belt once again and a sculpted buckle, which is now standard for my figures. I found a tiny cut-up Lego piece and I painted it to resemble his Walkman recorder. Lastly, I cut out those middle sections of his quad blasters and painted the details. Gamora has some interesting details I incorporated. Her head is from the original Milano, and I wanted to practice some weathering effects on her hair. I don't normally blend two colors together on my figures. The only th one I can think of is my reverse flash. Other than that, I don't have enough experience with painting a smooth transition of colors besides watercolor and oil paint. Acrylic is just tough to do these sort of shadings, personally. Her torso is nothing but layers and layers of e-tape. I started off with white to represent her undershirt, and then cut out various shapes of black e-tape to complete the rest. Her coat is once again a modified Kate Manis trench coat, but this time I glued it onto her torso instead. Her coat seems to be attached to her body, so I sanded the sides of the Lego group's torso, and then glued the trench coat along those curves so you can still see her slender figure, even with 3D fabric. Now that I mention it, I should probably do that for my Scarlet Witch figure in the future. The one thing I want to talk about is are her wrist. Not everyone could afford tiny tactical glove tops because they are just way too overpriced, so I decided to sculpt some wrist cuffs for myself. This wouldn't have happened if it wasn't my good friend once again, Detroitica. He came over and showed me some sculpting tips and tricks, and I would love to share it with you guys maybe in a future tutorial video. Her legs are self explanatory, and her sword is actually a Lego katana piece and an Asajj Ventress' lightsaber glued together. I then add a piece of plastic for more additional details. Drax is my second favorite figure in this showcase. I thought he was going to be tough to make, but really, it wasn't that bad to be honest. Maybe it's because during the time I was finishing Vulture and Cyborg, so Drax wasn't as challenging as I thought. His head smart is from the original Guardians set, but I painted some dark gray onto it. Most pictures I've seen, it looks like he has a dark grayish green skin tone. It's kind of hard to tell, because other pictures show that his skin isn't as dark as you'd think. But then again, that's probably lighting. This is also the first figure that I actually sculpted a muscular body. Chest wasn't all that difficult, but the back was definitely the most challenging, since LEGO don't really print back torsos with enough muscular lines compared to the front, so it's kind of hard to figure out like what exactly it should look like when it's in 3D. His arms took some attempts since I had to make sure the muscles look just right, as well as still looks more like LEGO as possible, and not so much of a tiny action figure. Originally, I wanted to extend his legs, but that would make him way too tall, 
So instead, I actually sculpted around the leg assembly and wrapped E-tape around it instead. That way he is taller than a regular minifigure, but not too tall. Legs are self-explanatory once again, and his knives are these things from Brickforge with some modification. And I really like how they look. Originally, I was going to use a minifigure game piece for Rocket, but after getting my hands on another baby figure, I decided to use that instead of for the base. I really like the scale of the baby figure, so I'm glad I decided to use it. I pretty much sculpted around his head, and that includes his whiskers, which falls off pretty easily, so I have to be very careful with it. For the rest, I sculpted his tail, back, and some buckles as well as used E-tape for the shoulder pad and belt. The hardest part overall was figuring out how to attach his guns onto his hand. At first, I was planning on carving out the inside so I can use a LEGO antenna piece for the handle, but that didn't seem very safe and the hand would probably chip off. I later thought that I could use the same Sticky Tech Procreate method, which worked like what I did for my Deadshot and Harley Quinn figure. However, that wasn't that successful either. My only option was pretty much just glue his guns onto his hand at that time. And it was like that for a long time, until just recently, uh, my friend Swagmaster Production sent me a couple of tiny magnets. I then cut out little pieces of metal and then wrapped it with Procreate and filled in the gaps inside his hands, and then wrapped the magnets with Procreate around the guns. That way, they are magnetic and I can display Rocket with or without guns. I am Groot. 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 That's all guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this in custom minifigure showcase video. And I do have one more figure planned for the next, which is Yandu, but I just need to get his head and so I can finish the rest. Maybe I'll consider making Nebula, Mantis, or even Ego in the future, but I can't guarantee anything. I can't make any promises now. We'll see. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.